Welcome to the Sunday Night Political Rant, brought to you by me, Dave, the Real Music Observer, uh, observing politics in real time for a handful of people out there, uh, just like you and just like me. So uh, the reason I'm doing this, and I'm going to be doing this right up uh, through the election, probably, at least up until the election happens, um, I'm doing this because... Quite honestly, I can't put all of my thoughts about this stuff into videos uh, when I'm talking about uh, musicians and, and things that are related to music. So there are very important things going on in the world right now. And I think this election is a big deal. And um, there is literally just endless amounts of money. They're paying, they're literally paying people to go and vote for this so-called new ticket, which came out of nowhere. They're going to be paying people, I saw $20 just, just to vote, just to go and vote. I read a couple of articles about this and uh, saw a video, and I'm just, it's mind-boggling to me what's happening in our country where, I get it, a lot of people don't like Donald Trump, all right? But let me let me just do a little summary here. So you don't have to like Donald Trump, what you have to like are lower gas prices, a secure southern border, no more fentanyl coming into the country, lower interest rates, a better economy. Just inter again, between the interest rates, the inflation, all these things, all of these monetary issues for most people, um, that would be enough to say, okay, I don't like the guy as a person. That's kind of where I'm at, by the way. I'm not Donald Trump's best friend. I'm not worshiping Donald Trump. I'm not in the Trump cult. I don't buy little bobblehead dolls and, you know, and all the merchandise and all this stuff. I mean, I get inundated with, uh, hey, would you like to buy a, you know, Donald Trump teddy bear? I'm like, no, no. What I want are lowest, lower interest rates and a better economy and a secure southern border, right? And uh, maybe some restraint when it comes to spending. You can argue that the spending machine is going to continue no matter who the president is. Uh, I guess I'm acting selfishly, though, because I, I liked uh, when I was paying a dollar and 92 cents for a gallon of regular gasoline. I, I kind of liked that. I kind of liked going to my local grocery store and getting a ton of stuff for under 100 bucks and not really worrying that much about how much I was spending on groceries. I mean, within reason. Um, you know, and I, I tend to be a bargain shopper. I tend to be, you know, buy the store brand when you can, that kind of a thing. But what's scaring me is the billions of dollars in free advertising that the news media and the algorithm is providing for this Harris uh, Waltz ticket, all right? Now, if you don't know much about uh, Tim Waltz, um, just, yeah, um, Tampon Tim is what people are calling him over on certain platforms, and I'll probably get fact checked or something for that. But that has uh really started to stick. Sorry, I shouldn't use that terminology. Um, someone's pulling Tim's strings. I could I could do this all day, but I I just don't want to because it's not supposed to be the comedy hour, and my comedy kind of sucks. So. What's what's troublesome to me, and this again, this is a political rant, and I'm going to focus on how they're just rebranding. They're going to say, no, no, we're not those things. And they're overheard saying all this stuff. Um, Harris especially has said that, um, you know, illegal immigration is fine and that you 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 don't make people illegal. She's taken the most crazy, hardcore positions that she can take, but now she's out on the campaign trail, and they and they've got a new teleprompter. They've they've reloaded it, and they've got new statements in there, like this one from last night. We know our immigration system is broken, and we know what it takes to fix it. Okay, um, well, right away, um, there's an admission that the immigration system is broken. Comprehensive reform. Now, I hate the word comprehensive because. It's a corporate BS language, but comprehensive reform, that includes 
And she says, yes, strong border security and an earned pathway to citizenship. Okay, so the needle that was on that record just kind of slid right off. And so people will say, oh, look, she's changed. I can vote for her. So I don't have to vote for Trump. I can vote for her. Now, before you, you know, do a su suicidal act, right? Um, first of all, the last four years, there's there's nothing that proves that they're serious about that. Even the bill that they had, and they keep saying, oh, they should have signed this bill. The bill let in like 5,000 people a day and said, you can't lower it more than that. And we'll do a few things here and there. We'll tinker around the edges. We'll make it slightly harder for some people to get asylum, but it's the same policy. 5,000 people a day. Do the math how many people that is times 365. Um, I don't know. Is that, what is that? That sounds like at least 200,000, 300,000 people a year automatic. And if we're not serious about border security, they're going to be more than that. And you're saying, well, who cares about border security? I mean, doesn't affect me. Oh, it doesn't, huh? Okay. Well, all of these social services that people on both sides seem to now love and cherish, whether it's, you know, Medicaid or Social Security or any of these programs, um, these programs are already heading to um, bankruptcy, lack of a better thought on the topic. Again, this is a political rant, so if things don't pop in my head immediately. Um, so they're they're headed toward bankruptcy, and we're going to overburden these programs with unlimited people who are going to need services. You come here with nothing, and you're going to definitely show up at, at every single... In fact, all of the NGOs that do this stuff, they, uh, they let people or they help people find everything that it could be a benefit to them. It's very well organized, like Catholic charities. They're, they're the ones that are showing up at the borders, getting people on buses or even airplanes, and then in some cases, sending them to places where they put them up at hotel rooms. I mean, we've got a huge homeless population, and you've just literally hopscotched over the homeless like they're not there, and now you're living in a four-star hotel somewhere on the taxpayer. And that's not necessarily the taxpayer because we can't afford to pay for that. So we're just printing money and that's causing all of the inflation. And the fact that we seem to never stop fighting a war somewhere, whether it's um, Ukraine, Israel, now stuff between uh, Taiwan and China, that's ramping up. And, and there are other hot spots all over the world that apparently we have to be involved in everything because the world, we haven't destabilized the world enough. We need to do it more. That's where a lot of people might disagree with me and say, oh, we need a super strong national defense so we can exert our power all around the world. That doesn't seem to be working anymore. We've got China, Russia, we've got all these ascendant countries, global uh, areas in the Southern hemisphere that are are, are now becoming a real factor in this and our foreign policy is like 30 years behind so uh and it's it's too expensive and we basically built a, a war-based economy and a little footnote here um this harris walls ticket will be a blank check for the military industrial complex uh walls was in the military he went a walls see how i did that and um you know, and the other one, she's she's not, I don't know. She's just going to be like, yes, sure, we'll do that. Yes, Mr. General, it, whatever you guys want to do. So the deep state, if you want to call them that, they're they're just going to be able to do whatever they want to. It's not that, by the way, the deep state is, is really not that deep. It's right there. It's shallow. It's the shallow state. It's right there. You can see it right out in the open. Um, But what's quite frightening here is that, um, she can go out on the campaign trail and she can sound like uh, she wants border security now. Um, saying about Trump, he talks a big game about a lot of things, uh, but he does not walk the walk. I don't know. 
Uh, you can look at the numbers for yourself. And what she has to run on is her record as vice president, not her record as a prosecutor, which they're trying to kind of spin that and, and say she was really tough on crime. She was so tough on crime, she put people away for like these petty crimes and she threw away the key. And a lot of that stuff was against African-Americans. Um, you can agree or disagree. You know, if somebody has a small bag of weed or whatever, and uh, she's throwing the book at them and then throwing away the key. I mean, Tulsi Gabbard eviscerated her four years ago in a debate which should have ended her political career. It, it, I mean, it was such a disaster, but yet here she is uh, running for the president and Tulsi Gabbard, who could be presidential material, is nowhere to be seen on the campaign trail or anything. Um, you know, Trump probably would have uh, done a good thing if he had picked Tulsi as the VP, but I don't mind Vance. Uh, Vance is a pretty strong VP candidate, much stronger than Tim Tampon Tim Walls. I mean, geez. Um, so the article, and by the way, what they're doing in the media, they're giving Harris and Walls a couple of things. Unlimited exposure, billions of dollars in free advertising. Because every article spins it like, oh, if you think that Kamala Harris is weak on the border, well, no, she's not. Um, here's the proof. She's trying to flip the script on the Republican attacks. Like, they're only Republican attacks, right? They're not attacks from uh, independents, common sense Americans who aren't part of a political party who say, can we just shut the border down? Can we just shut it? Why can't we shut it down? I mean, we're protecting borders in other countries, right? We're trying to protect the border in Ukraine. That's not working either. So our border security plan, whether it be here or abroad, really sucks. And we're spending tons of money and we're not getting any return on investment. Of course, we're not spending any money really on our southern border. Uh, the policy uh, was signed into being by an executive order by um, Sleepy Joe when he took over. And there are graphs where you could see the immigration was pretty steady under Trump and then, again, hockey stick under Biden. And it's starting to plateau a little bit. And uh, they've yelled at Mexico a few times, asking them to kind of turn some people around or do something down there, try to curtail this a little bit while the election is going down. So you don't have those numbers to report right up until Election Day. Folks, there's already been enough damage all right, they can kind of fix this. They'll they'll release a lot of oil into the uh, into the marketplace, you know, the month before, and you'll see prices go under three bucks a gallon where you live or something. And people will say, "Look, you know, all the stuff they're doing, it's working great." And then as soon as they get in office, this reminds me, like Barack Obama made all these promises. Like in two thousand eight, he said, "You know, I believe marriage is between a man and a woman." <laughs> I'm laughing because it's hysterical. It's hysterical. You know, I know we've already crossed that bridge, that Rubicon, and there's no going back. But these people make crazy promises, and there's no way that they're going to keep this. They're just trying to look a little more sane, a little more commonsensical. And I just don't think people should buy it. Here's my thing about Donald Trump. OK, hear me out. I don't really like Donald Trump as a person. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't really like him as a person. Some people think he's the nicest guy. He's the greatest guy. And there are days where I say, okay, maybe Trump's not so bad. But overall, I don't think he's the standard bearer for high morals and living uh, a decent, chaste lifestyle. Um, many of us, though, fall into this category. So I get that. Uh, you can argue that, well, you know, God uses certain people who have faults to get things done. I guess people don't like his personality. And to me, I would just say his personality shouldn't be really factored into your decision. I would say, do you want lower gas prices? Do you want lower interest rates? 
Do you want a secure southern border? For real. I mean, Trump can sign an executive order on day one. These people make this, oh, you've got to do this. Now, it would be better later on to, to pass a law, to pass some kind of bipartisan law that says we have to have a secure southern border. We have to. There's You can't just allow people to come here indefinitely um, without any sort of system that just just oversees this process even if it's like an ellis island type of thing which seemed to work pretty well a hundred years ago more than a hundred years ago um right now we've just got an open door and you you can't stop them from coming through and you've got the fentanyl crisis which is another part of this so again these guys are running to try to almost revise their Oh, their own history on the issues. They're 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 basically erasing things that are out there on the internet. Like now, she wasn't the border czar. She was the border czar. They declared it. There's videos, and she's been as a wall as Tim was when he left the military on that issue. I don't think she did anything. They asked her if she'd been to the border. She said no, and I haven't been to Europe either. Okay, great answer. I mean, you should go to the border to find out what's going on there. So you could say, wow, there's a humanitarian crisis. Um, I've changed my viewpoints on this. RFK went to the border, and he wasn't as informed. And when he went and came back, he was like, wow, uh, we need to shut this down. He wants to shut it down. His campaign really is going nowhere right now, but he wants to shut it down. Um and I think Trump wants to shut it down. And it sounds like these guys are saying, yeah, they want to control it and do a better job and do comprehensive immigration reform, whatever um, that is. But it, it's not as aggressive as what Trump would do. And who says they're going to actually follow through with this, right? So she was a border czar. The media doesn't want to say she was a border czar, but that's what she was appointed to do. Um, she was directed by President Joe Biden to tackle the enduring root causes of migration, like poverty and violence in Central America. Um, she was never put in charge of the border, nor labeled a czar. Okay, so all now they're rewriting history. What they're saying is she was just supposed to do a study of what was going on. Well, Here's the dirty secret. The United States likes to destabilize countries in South America and around the world, and their population uh, then gets frustrated and says, you know what, I'm not, we're not staying here with this economy, the way this government is operating. We're going to head north to America. That's where the promised land is, and they all show up here. So, again, they're trying to rewrite this, that she wasn't a border czar, but she was just put in charge so what's her report? Did she come back with a report on the root causes of migration, like poverty and violence? Did she? And how do we fix that? You know, if if that's all she was in charge of, um, what were her solutions to that? And if she had solutions to those problems, wouldn't migration stop or at least slow down to some degree? See, there are people that believe that. Um, there's a more nefarious thing going on. And I'm trying to be fair here. But it does seem as though they want to import this huge population of people from the third world into America, which puts a huge burden on all of the social services that we currently have. And we can't pay for these social services, so we just print more money. The result is more inflation. And more people fighting for fewer resources and crappy services, I might add, because these people are overwhelmed with all of these people in need. The government has to get this under control. We need to take a break. That would be my solution. We need to take a break from all immigration until we can assimilate all the people we have and then maybe return a bunch of people who are criminals, uh, who've already caused problems uh, being here and already have, um, you know, disrespected the country by breaking the law. Essentially, when they 
come over the border, they're disrespecting because they're breaking the law. But I understand if you're trying to feed your family and this is the only way you think you can do it, and you're coming here for that reason, and you can prove that, demonstrably prove that, then yes, there should be a pathway to citizenship uh, providing that you can you know, learn the culture, learn the language, and become a productive citizen of the United States, just like things used to be uh, in the days of Ellis Island, the days of Eisenhower. He did a lot of that stuff. A lot of people forget about that, but I'm just going on a little rant here, folks. Um, so, again, the media is assisting in trying to rehabilitate or, or trying to prop up these two people. Um, look at the states they're from. All right. Look at how those states are being run into the ground. California and Minnesota, respectively. He's the governor of Minnesota. He watched cities burn down. And... Uh, didn't call the National Guard for like three or four days. And a lot of these businesses that were um, burnt to the ground and never came back, they were minority-owned businesses. So again, if black lives matter, they should matter for the owners of these businesses that actually produce something and make life better for people in their communities. And apparently, those people, I guess, don't matter. It's only the the peaceful but fiery protesters that go out there that really matter. And and that's sad. And these people were bailed out by Kamala Harris. She started some kind of a fund to help uh, post bond for these people. So many of them did not pay for what they did. They, they just were allowed to get out of jail. I think most of them were let out of jail because the cause, for, for this group of people, the cause... Um, is so important that there's no crime attached to that cause. We can excuse that because of all of the injustice that we've created here in this country. Here's the truth. If you want to succeed in America, you can succeed if you work hard, you play by the rules. I would say 90% of the time. And then if you don't succeed doing it that way, there's help that you can get. And, and you will be first in line to get that help, especially if you've lived a decent life and you haven't caused uh, crime and chaos. If you're one of those people that just has fallen on hard times, uh, most Americans are okay with you um, receiving help, you know, limited help, not forever help, but limited help. And that help hopefully uh, is in the form of retraining. And yes, in some cases, money or food, depending on how bad you are you know, how bad off you are. So all that to say in my rant here is that it seems as though there's a great hoodwinking underway. There, there is a great rebranding, uh, repackaging. Um, I, it, it's just sad. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that people just don't like Donald Trump. But I would just appeal and say, I think you should reconsider this because um, the economy between 2017 and at least part of 2020, before all of these lockdowns and things took place, um, that economy was was pretty decent. And, uh, and most Americans would want to go back to that economy. And most Americans want lower interest rates and um, lower gas prices. As soon as you get energy prices under control, inflation will drop. Prices will go down to more respectable levels. We still have to get the printing press under control, and we can't keep spending trillions of dollars on bailouts. And unfortunately, that happened under Trump and Biden. Trump had a little pandemic to deal with. Um some kind of uh, self-inflicted thing, or I, I don't know. I don't know where that came from and, and why it affected so many people in the way it did. And people are still spooked by that today. And a lot of people believe that that might actually happen again, which is just, I, I don't know. It could, it could happen again. And uh, are we going to be ready for that? So again, um, 
you can do vote the way you want to vote, but um, know this that um, Trump has proven that he can uh, get the economy going. Uh, he can get the respect of certain countries. He can negotiate trade deals. He can negotiate uh, peace with other countries. I, I mean, I want a peacemaker, and I know people don't think of Trump in that regard, but um, things were a lot more peaceful. I mean, look at the war in Ukraine and uh, between Israel and uh, Hamas or Gaza or Palestine or whatever you want to call it. Uh I think people on both sides would appreciate less war and a better economy. I, I just that's what this is about. Less war, a better economy. Um, for me personally, I would bring about 80 percent of these troops home, close about 50 percent of these military bases and, and stop being uh, the world's bully because that's costing us trillions of dollars each year. And it's not earning us friends and influencing you know the the culture of these countries it's making people uh dislike america and say hey get out of our backyard why are you here again you know everybody's trying to surveil us and you guys we don't want you here so that's you know in a nutshell those are some of my thoughts some of my thoughts are a little unorthodox the stuff about destable if or if she was supposed to find out the root causes of migration what are they? And how come you didn't fix it? You had four years to fix it. They're still coming here in droves. So even if we erase borders are from your, you know, your resume and say, okay, you weren't borders are, you're supposed to, you know, find out what the root causes of migration. You're supposed to do a study. Where's the blue ribbon panel? Where, where's the, the term paper? I didn't see any homework turned in. I mean, it's embarrassing how much money free advertising and free rebranding that's going on in the media right now. Uh, and this is because she is their candidate. Uh, she is a puppet. Her strings can be pulled any which way. And to me, that means the military industrial complex and the medical industrial complex. I don't want to even get into that. That's another video. Um, they're all going to be on board because she's a puppet. And they can make her do whatever uh, they want her to do. So anyway, that's my uh, political rant for Sunday, August 11th, 2024. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. Um, these videos all get mirrored over to Odyssey. And uh, over on Odyssey, this is something that I just found out, there is a way for you to leave comments over on Odyssey. But uh, similar to the buy me a coffee function, uh, it prevents spam and trolls and some of the nasty things that get through. So if you're interested in following me over there, as well as following me here, that's fantastic. And yes, there is a way if you want to leave a comment, you can do so over there. Now, again, even with all that said, if I see just crazy negativity, then I will immediately pull the plug on that. But for now, I'm just uh, mentioning, mentioning it to folks, and it's for all the videos that I've done, I think, fairly recently. I don't know if it goes back too far, but um, in case people didn't know. Uh, and it's a good way to back up my content because you never know what's going to happen here on this free speech platform that I'm on right now. You never know. Um, we know during the election that if you do a search for certain terms, it takes you somewhere else assassination or, you know, they're, they're just certain words that apparently uh, they've, they've regulated or manipulated. So um, you're not getting what you're actually looking for. And people aren't finding this information. Uh, and at this stage, we, we really need speech to be unregulated. We need speech to truly be free again. If anything, in, in 2024, the slogan should be make speech free again. That would be nice. And um, that would go for this platform and every platform. And another one is Facebook. Facebook is brutal. So anyway, folks, thanks for watching. God bless everyone. Pray for our country and our world. Pray for peace around the world. Pray for common sense in government at the local and 
the federal level, and uh, we need a fix to these problems, and, and we needed it like 10 years ago.